this is the unit 4 of the section 2 of the hydrogen storage with the general title of intermetallic compounds. Uh, in this unit, I'm going to go through a general introduction about those compounds, the intermetallic compounds. Then I'm going to go into some more detail about the main families of intermetallic compounds that they are currently used uh, by researchers and industry. And those groups are the AB5, the AB2, the AB, uh, the BCC solid solution, complex hydrides, and finally, uh, the magnesium-based hydrides. And at the end of this whole unit, I'm going to go through some detail about the uh, main advantages and disadvantages of each one. So a comparison of these two. So to begin with, uh, what is an intermetallic compound? So we're talking about some stoichiometric compounds that uh, typically uh, are formed by two metals, normally the metal A and the metal B. Both of these metals can form hydrides, so we're going to have the AHX, as you can see on the presentation, and the BHY. Um, one of these forms a fully stable hydride, once an unstable hydride. Each of these hydrides do have their own enthalpy of formation, delta H A and delta H B. Now, um, when it comes together, the resulting hydrides has a stoichiometry of, as you can see over here, A with index M, B with index N, and H with index Z, where M and N are integers and Z is a real number. So just a random thing. It might be A 1.5, B 0 0.8, and H 5, 3, whatever it is. So um, the enthalpy of formation for the whole intermetallic is somewhere in between the enthalpy of formation for, this, for the stable and the enthalpy of formation for the uh, non-stable hydride. And those intermetallics, uh, they can form several groups and everything, the properties, the thermodynamics is purely affected by the stoichiometry. Normally, the most common um, studied intermetallics are the AB5, the AB2, uh, the AB and the A2B7 sometimes. So we will go through some details on these compounds. So let's start with the AB5 compounds, which are the easiest, I would say, uh, compounds in intermetallics to study. Normally, the A part, the stable hydride, consists of uh, the element A. Normally, it's a rare earth element based on lanthanum, uh, sometimes yttrium or zirconium. When it comes to more industrial-based applications, uh, the mish metal is using. Mish metal means this is a combination of metals mostly based on cerium and lanthanum together. So then again, uh, depending on the application, industry has several stoichiometries and several percentages of those two materials. Uh, on the other hand, the element B is normally a D uh, transition metal. Some, mostly it's nickel. Uh, but sometimes, in order to improve the properties, we uh, add some other transitional elements such as um, uh, silicon or titanium or sometimes aluminium, so to improve the cyclability. Uh, again, we can, by this partially substitution of these elements, we can uh, literally synthesize thousands of different AB5 materials. Uh, because it's quite easy to substitute the A or the B sides. So again, this substitution has to do purely with the application. So if we need to increase the cyclability, yes, aluminium on the nickel side is highly recommended. Or when we want to have a cheap uh, material for like massive production, yes, the mist metal is probably something that we really care. And cerium and lanthanum together, they do form something which is uh, makes perfect sense. So again, uh, by this partial sub substitution of uh, of elements, we can make the AB5 hydrides to work a bit better and more efficient. Another family is the AB2 family. Uh, sometimes it's called the Lave, Lave's phase compounds, where there are mostly three phases over here. We have the hexagonal C14, the magnesium zirconium 2, based the cubic C15, the magnesium um, copper 2, and the hexagonal C36, the magnesium nickel 2. Now, again, those materials are mostly called by uh, the community as the high pressure materials, and they are used uh, for both stationary and um, more, uh, you know, mobile applications. 
Uh, normally, the industry uses those materials when it comes to build compressors, metal hydride-based compressors. Normally, uh, the most common part is the zirconium-based intermetallics. Why? Because they do have a relatively large hydrogen storage capacity. Sometimes they can go up to 2% of the, of the whole uh, weight. They do have long cycle life and relatively low cost. On the other hand, sometimes it, when it comes to the activation, then we might need some high energy activation for those materials. Another really important uh, family is the AB compounds, the titanium iron compounds. Uh, these compounds, they do go up to 2% of um, their weight under ambient conditions. But sometimes, uh, again, when it comes to the activation, there are problems. Normally, um, the activation needs a lot of energy. We'll have to go really high temperature, uh, leave it for a couple of hours, then go down to really low temperature, leave it for another couple of hours, and do this maybe eight to ten times. So when it comes to industrial-based stuff, then um, that's costly, and for the massive production, again, we have a, a small problem. Another really nice family is the BCC uh, solid solutions. So these alloys are formed when we dissolve one or more hydrogen absorbing metallic elements. Uh, normally, uh, the host solvents are palladium, titanium, zirconium, and vanadium. And the thing is, we do have two main issues over here with the BCC solid solutions, is the relatively low uh, capacities, gravimetric capacities, and the relatively high cost. Uh, on the other hand, another problem is that the titanium and zirconium-based solid solutions are quite stable. That means when we form the hydride, we need a lot of energy to release hydrogen. On the other hand, the vanadium-based alloys, they do have some really nice properties, but vanadium is quite expensive. So another trick that the community is doing is that we're using the uh, ferro-vanadium, some iron, so to reduce the cost. Uh, another family, more recent family, I would say, is the complex uh, hydrides where there are several compositions over here. Normally, we do have the chemical formula A with index X, ME with index Y, and H, the hydrogen with Z. Normally, the A element is the uh, elements from the first and the second groups of the periodic table, where the EME part is mostly aluminum or boron. And then uh, all we have is some complex hydrides again, because of the complexity of the reaction, sometimes the reaction is on two steps. We do have some issues uh, when it comes to uh, heat management, theoretical description, uh, even though uh, we, we are facing some issues with the cyclability and the repeatability as well. Finally, a very important family is the magnesium family, where the magnesium is important. Why? Because the magnesium is quite abundant on the Earth's crust, so we can find magnesium really easy. Um, it's a non-toxic material, is quite safe when it operates, and has a very, very high volumetric and gravimetric capacity. Gravimetrically, it can go up to, theoretically, 7.6% uh, of the whole uh, mass of the material. But... There are three main drawbacks over here, the slow kinetics, the high operation temperatures, and unfortunately, the high reactivity with hydrogen. So we have to be really careful when we are working with magnesium, when it comes to magnesium. Um, the reasons for those drawbacks is the formation of uh, uh, oxide layers on the surface. So we have to go through, again, high energy preparation, high energy activation. Then we do have the slow dissociation of hydrogen molecules on the magnesium surface, and that results to really slow kinetics, and uh, we have slow diffusion through the hydride. So, um, again, there are several things we can do over here. Of course, we can do heat treatment after the synthesis, or we can go to other synthesis ways when it comes to um, uh, high energy ball milling. So we can use several ratios under several atmospheres to create this magnesium. Uh, there's a lot of groups worked and still working that uh, magnesium um, alloys and several nice things have been arised out of this. And finally, if we want to compare those families, as you can see this uh, table over here, uh, for the metallic hydrides, we don't have great gravimetric capacity. We have really good uh, volumetric capacity. 
really good temperature range and the rates of absorption, the kinetics of absorption and desorption are quite high. On the other hand, the magnesium presents really high gravimetric and volumetric, but the temperature has to be really high because we're talking about stability here, thermodynamic stability is non-toxic and quite abundant. That means we do have really cheap raw materials. When it comes to complex hydrides, as we say, the alanates or the borohydrides, yes, we can go really high in terms of gravimetric and volumetric, but toxicity and abundancy that means are quite expensive and it's not easy to be found. And finally, uh, on another, on a to totally different approach when it comes to MOVs or nanocarbons, uh, we can reach really high gravimetric capacities. On the other hand, the temperatures over here, they have to go really low to minus 170. Mm -hmm.